We've had more unity in the last three years in the Democratic Party than any time in history. For instance, uh, in the last election, we had a governor that ran that was unopposed in the Democratic primary. And for the first time in this century, there wasn't any statewide runoffs that were required. So I think this is ample proof the party is united. What about the Ben Barnes, John Connolly, quote, faction, unquote, uh, as opposed to the Preston Smith faction? So doesn't this seem to be widening any split more so than, than say, in the last three years? Oh, I don't think so. You know, everybody should have, should be allowed to have their own views. And I think they're expressing themselves with the way they feel, feel within their own mind about the party. But I don't think it's of any major consequence. I think the party is, uh, is uh, working closely together, and I don't think we have the problems that, uh, that have been uh, thought about in the newspapers. Senator Benson has specifically called for a different chairman to this point of view. Uh, how soon do you anticipate that there would be a meeting of the full executive committee at which any of these things could be ironed out before you get into the campaign year? Well, we haven't set any particular date when the full committee will meet. Uh, the State Democratic Party is a party that believes in involvement and participation of the committee members, and I'm speaking about the members on the SBC. We have about 12 different committees, and all of them will function in certain areas, and they'll come up with programs that fit into that particular area. And whenever it's necessary, well, the full committee will meet. Before, uh, say, fall? I couldn't determine this at this time because uh, we're going to have to wait until these committees get their programs going, and then when it's necessary, well, they will meet. The House of Representatives got off to a rather slow start today, as many members were still licking wounds from the bitter fight they had here yesterday and last night over House redistricting. The plan that was finally approved was attributed directly to House Speaker Gus Mutcher. Dallas and Terrence County representatives will run at large, 18 in Dallas, 11 in Terrence, each county receiving three new members because of an increase in population. Dallas and Terrence County representatives generally supported the Mutcher plan. Only Dick Reed and Fred Agnich were among the bitter foes in the battle yesterday. Final passage of this bill came only after ten and a half hours of heated debate in which the opponents tried desperation parliamentary tactics and had an almost endless number of amendments proposed for debate. Those who fought against this bill, however, say that it may never take effect. Representative Rex Braun of Houston explained. There's many of us that feel that we are ready to go to court if this bill does become law in this session. What's wrong with it? Well, of course, it's almost a, a joke when you see uh, even an area like Dallas still running at large after many court rulings. Uh, Harris County, I have to represent a district that, that's a gooseneck neck district. A, a judge will probably laugh this district out of, out of the court. Uh, it's almost impossible to be representative of a group of people when you represent uh, people on one side in the working class and people on the other side in management.
I think you're uh, being naive beyond belief if you believe that Vice President Agnew uh, made his Des Moines speech or any of the further speeches without the knowledge of the administration. And now it's, it's been proven, as we suspected all along, uh, uh, administration top spokesmen like uh, Herb Klein and even the president himself has, has said that uh, uh, you local guys are great, but it, those networks are really, uh, are really bad. Are you genuinely afraid of excessive government regulation? Do you see this actually coming out of this session of Congress, or do you feel that most of this is talk? Well, I think it's talk at this particular stage, and I think that if, uh, if the members of, of the press, and I mean uh, newspapers as well as the electronic media, don't stand uh, firmly and on their rights under the First Amendment, that, uh, yes, I think we might very well have legislation that would change our accepted mode of life. What kind of legislation is now being considered? Well, uh, as you know, the so-called truth in broadcasting bill that has come up in Congress, which uh, would demand that uh, we keep all of our tapes, all of our film, in perpetuity. Can you imagine what would happen in your film vaults if you had to keep every single piece of film that you ever shot or every audio tape? I don't think anyone you know, there would be no place to put it. And uh, who's going to who's gonna look at it and who's going to determine? In other words, they're going to have a nationwide censorship. That's what it amounts to.